Hey YouTubers and car enthusiasts, welcome back to Tony the Technician channel and today I'm going to be moving into a video about a battery relocation for my 85 Camaro. Now it's pretty universal so if you're planning on doing a uh, battery re relocation um, on basically any vehicle it's going to be the same process just determining on where you're going to place the battery and then if you're going to go with like a a red top battery or the type of battery that you are going to use will determine the kind of box that you're going to use. Um, now I'm going to be running an Optima red top so it's a gel mat so it can be positioned basically any direction you want and it'll work just fine you don't got to worry about uh, really uh, it leaking or anything like that so that's a great thing about those batteries. Um, but I'm going to go over every single product that I've purchased so far in order to do this battery relocation. So if you're planning on doing a battery relocation on your vehicle, these are some items that you might want to look into and uh, be very careful when ordering the items for battery relocation. Remember, this is a very important part of your car. So let's get into uh, all the items I purchased and I'll go over them. Okay, so starting off with the products that I purchased for my battery relocation. now. Some things that you're going to have to determine is where you're mounting your battery, uh, how much cable you're going to need, the size of cable that you'll need. If you're only going a few feet, you can go with a smaller gauge of cable or wire. Um, the longer you go, depending on the amperage and everything, everything that you have hooked up in your car, the bigger the gauge. You might have to go to a, you know, this is just a zero gauge. You might need double zero, uh, triple, quad, you know. It, get pretty big and it can get expensive. Now, if you want to do this the good way and it's going to cost you a little bit more, you're going to want to stay away from CCA cable or wire. Um, it's copper clad aluminum, I believe. It's basically uh, an aluminum rod with copper wrap around it. it. It's going to be cheaper, but it's not going to be able to handle the amperage that a full copper wire handle this is full copper this is welding cable uh, it's pro it's a lot cheaper than most of the time than going to your speaker store and getting all aluminum speaker wire and everything so check out welding cable I'll link all these products down in the description I'll also try and throw in the, the price of this cable right here this is 15 feet of negative 15 feet of positive I still got to determine if I'm going to mount my battery uh, in my box that I built for my rear seat delete or if I'm going to run my battery all the way to the rear This should be enough depending on if I run a separate cable just for my starter and then another one for a junction box under the hood or if I'm going to combine them not really sure yet, but First thing you're going to need is obviously some cable to relocate your battery and you're going to want to make sure that it handles the power you figure out uh, how much amperage draw your vehicle uh, has on average um, make sure you get the right size depending on your amperage draw, the distance that you're moving your battery. And in the description where I have this linked, you will see in the pictures it shows, you know, if you're getting 15 feet, it's, the zero gauge is good for 285 amps or 315 amps, whatever it is, uh, you need to make sure you're getting the correct size. That's very important. You don't want to overheat, start a fire in your vehicle or anything like that. So that brings me my, to my next item, which is a circuit breaker. You can either run an inline fuse or a circuit breaker. This runs roughly $30. This is a 250 amp manual reset circuit breaker. It is uh, waterproof. So you mount this basically as close to the battery as possible. You'll run your battery line in on this side and then out to your load on this side. Now, it's going to be really hard on newer vehicles with the starters. They do tend to pull a lot of amps, so you most likely won't be able to run something like this. It does say ignition protected, um, but I might just run my starter just on its own separate cable and protect it with some uh, sleeving and then run another cable for a junction box up underneath the hood so I can still jump my car and, you know, do attachments from the junction box up under the hood, but this is a 250 amp. You can get them in basically any size. It's going to run you around $30. So it's really nice because instead of a fuse, if something happens, you can reset it. I also like it better than a temperature reset circuit breaker because those automatically reset. And if it keeps resetting, it could still overheat and you uh, might not even know that you have a problem. So 
here's what it runs at. It's actually pretty good. I could probably actually run it for my starter, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. So here's kind of the information on that. And it will also be linked down in the description. But here's the part number. So moving on to the next item. When I picked up these cables, I also went ahead and picked up the full copper lugs. Um, they do have aluminum coated ones, which are good for marine and stuff like that, to where if you're dealing with a lot of corrosion and stuff, that could help. Um, but this is, you also want to make sure when purchasing these that you're getting uh, a good product as well. These usually will also show a rating. This is for a single zero gauge wire and you need to make sure that these can also handle the amperage that's running through the lines because a lot of places won't state that. So I believe the cable is good for almost 300. These are good for around 260 amps continuous. So it's a, it's a pack of 10. Can't remember exactly what I paid for it, maybe $10. So, and if you're worried about crimping these, obviously uh, you can use maybe like a screwdriver and a hammer or a punch and a hammer or you can go and you can get one of these hammer punches it's a spring-loaded steel shaft with obviously a punch type end to it and uh, you would put your lug and cable in here and the spring helps hold the lug in place and then you would simply just take your hammer and tap it down and that crimps your lug to your wire so that's really nice these are going to run anywhere from i believe 15 to 30 dollars it all depends on the brand and everything but it's a pretty nice product this one does have a metal strap around the bottom so if you wanted to you could run some screws through here and mount it to like a uh, workbench so it's really nice that's a uh, what is it temco yeah temco but it'll be linked down in the description as well let's move on so next up is my battery junction stuff. Um, so I'm going to run the cable from the battery located in the back of the vehicle up front. And I still want to be able to jump the car if necessary without digging into the trunk or underneath my rear seat delete box or anything like that. I also want to be able to tie in any new items that I'm adding to the vehicle or anything like that and not have to search for a good ground or a good positive um, or have to run another cable all the way back to the battery. So this will be mounted somewhere in the engine bay along with this. This is going to be mounted for my negative. So I always have a good ground and a good positive up in the engine bay. And then you're going to have a boot to protect your negative and then a lid to cover your positive. So it's a nice little product. If I remember correctly, I think it's roughly $15 for the, I'm not too sure. Like I said, it's all linked down in the description, but this is another thing to think about. It's not absolutely necessary, but it will really help. Uh, this way I can still run my engine ground straight to this, which will technically be to the battery. So, you know, you get a good ground and everything. So next up is going to be some flex braid. PET braided sleeve. I got 3 8 and half inch. This is going to be used to cover up the battery cable. Everything in my engine bay is black and red, so I figured I'd go with some nice uh, braided, it's nylon braided sleeving. You basically expand it and slip it over the cable or wire, and it protects it. Now, I'm going to be running this over top of the battery cables and everything all the way throughout the vehicle because it's very important that you protect these wires because they're going the length of the car so they're more likely to rub on more items uh, and the battery main cables are the last thing that you want to be uh, destroyed uh, because then you could have a really bad day so you always want to make sure you protect them so I picked this up this is really cheap uh, you know maybe ten dollars so there you go if you need the part numbers or anything like that then I also picked up a couple of battery connectors. This is where the cables are going to connect to. These are for the GM side mount. Uh, I'm going to be going with the Optimus, Optima 7525, so I'll need these. And then I also bought these, 
which are the adapters that will go through the side mount, screw into the battery post, and then I can attach whatever I want onto that end as well. So I got two of each and the part number is 30400. GM replaces original GM battery bolt. And then these, I'm not too sure if I have a part number on. Doesn't look like it, but I will try and find them. These are full copper as well. So uh, like I said before, you wanna make sure that you're getting some good products for this and very important part of your car. And then next up is since I'm going with the Optima 7525 and I'm thinking about mounting it, I'm not actually getting a box. Um, later on I could, but I'm not going NHRA rules where you know it has to be vented through the bottom of the body or outside the vehicle or anything like that. Technically an Optima battery doesn't need to be vented, um, but this is pretty cool. So it's all aluminum, machine piece of aluminum and it has four mounting holes so i would find a location in my car use four of these bolts bolt it through the flooring of the vehicle and then it comes with these two mounts you place your battery in here and then this sits over top in between the spirals of the optimal battery and it's going to hold the battery to the plate and this is going to run around $40, if I remember correctly, $40, $50. Now there are some out there with tops and all this other stuff, um, but it'll have like a metal plate on top and it's really close to the battery posts because the Optima 7525 has both top mounts and side mounts. I didn't really like how close it was. Um, and I think this will secure just fine. I might throw a strap over it, just depending on how sturdy it feels once I get it uh, installed. Now that's basically it besides a battery. Now I do have another item here I might as well just throw in here. So you guys might know that I've done all new fuel line and uh, trans cooler lines and everything in the vehicle and I got some black versions of these but these are called hose separators and these are made specifically for, doesn't say made in China, um, 6AN. You can get them in any size you want but this is my fuel line. And basically you just take this Allen head, you release it, and then you slide it over. I have fuel line in my vehicle that sits right next to each other, but it rubs. So in order to prevent that, you can get these in basically any color. You put these on and it basically makes the lines ride right next to each other without making contact, rubbing on each other or anything like that. It also cleans up the engine bay and makes it look really nice. So I think I, I picked up four or five of these for ten dollars so pretty good products i'm gonna use this on my fuel lines and trans cooler lines basically anything i need to keep uh, the engine bay nice and organized okay youtubers so those are the items that i've purchased in order to do my battery relocation on my camaro now if you need any help please feel free to drop a comment down below and i'll do my absolute best to try and help you uh find like the right size cable or anything like that but you're probably going to have to search for your own vehicle's uh, amperage draw and everything like that. Once you have that information, you can start determining what products to buy. A lot of people just buy the $100 or $200 kit from Jegs or Summit or eBay, you know, and it's not going to include everything that you need, like the circuit breaker or fuse. That's going to be something that's not normally included in those. Uh, you'll need to determine your battery box type, uh, depending on your battery type. Uh, gauge, you know, you might not need zero gauge. You might be able to go four gauge or whatever to determine uh, your distance that you're going to be going. But you guys get it. If you guys have any question, any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask. Um, I'm sorry if I confused you. Hopefully this helped. But if you have any questions on any of these products, like I said before, I will do my best to link them down in the description for you guys just in case uh, you want to go with one of these or see what's kind of uh, related to these items. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.